assalamu alaikum and good morning uh, once again in the lecture of the series of the biostates uh, today is the again is the lecture number 4 in which uh, lecture number 4 part b in the yesterday uh, lecture in the yesterday lecture uh, we learned about the central tendency and uh, what is the central tendency actually is the central tendency is the measure the central part of any data set if the data is normally distributed uh, as i told you in the previous lecture if the data is normally distributed it will give the shape uh, the, it will give the bell shape and the bell shape uh, the half of the bell shape on the left side the half uh, the half of the data uh, is present on the left side of the bell shape and half of on the data is present on the right side and the half of the data set of the left side of the bell shape is given the mirror image of the right side the total probability of the this data of the bell shape of darwari is 1 is 1 or 100% the total probability you know very well the total probability is 1 or is a 100% now as we uh, learned in the yesterday what is the central tendency is actually says when the data is normally distributed uh, and normally distributed so the the mean and the median and the uh, mode these are the three method uh, these are the three method by which we can measure the central tendency of any normal distributed data in the in the normal distributed data which is in a balanced shape the mean mode and median these are three is lies in the center of the data in the center tendency of the data the mean and mode median it is tend to pull the data towards the center and make the all the data is a cluster towards the center so in the center tendency just only we are going to measure the mean mode and median of the normal distributed data in yesterday we learned about the uh, the mean the one method which is we learned about the mean and mean we uh, calculate the, uh, the central tendency of the normal distributed of data in which we measure the average of the data set now today we will go to learn about the second method uh, of the uh, for the measurement of the central tendency the second method is called the median is called the median the what is the property of the median the first one median is always the middle the middle portion are uh, the middle data the middle of the middle data the middle value the middle data is the middle dentum of the data set this is the one the second one it is give the middle value after arranging the data after arrange uh, after the arrange or ordered form of the data the order form of the data when you if the data is given to you the uh, and the data set just always keep me remember while measuring the median you always arrange the data arrange or uh, arrange the data in the ascending form from the lowest value towards the highest value just keep in mind if you if you uh, uh, goes to measure the raw data of any data set which is given to you in the in the exams without arranging of the data you cannot calculate uh, the median of the data set it's become some error or mistakes has been happened in your uh, answer of your question the third one it is always used for the discrete discrete or interval interval ratio nominal or ordinal 
data. It can be used for the discrete ratio, for the, uh, for the discrete data, for the continuous data, for the interval data, for the ratio data and for the ordinal data. But mostly it is not used for the uh, ordinal data. And the fourth one, the, the middle, uh, the median value, the middle value, middle value of median of any data set will not be affected, will not be affected by the extreme value extreme value or the outlier or the outlier in the median if any in any given set of the data if the extreme value is present in the lowest level at the in the highest level uh, in the uh, lowest one and the highest one that it cannot be uh, it will not be affect on the median value or on the median of the data set but the outlier of the lowest value, either it is in the lowest value, either in it is a highest value, it will affect on the mean. It affect on the mean. Yesterday we learned about that. that how the we learned we learned very well that the how the outlier extreme value affected on the uh, mean of the data set. But in the median, the outlier is, will not be affect on the value of the median. After the arranging. Let's come up. Uh, we uh, solve the median uh, by the through the formula for that. It is a formula for that for the to calculate the median. But this formula, which is here, m d is equal to n plus one divided by two. This formula, which is for the median, which is calculate or draw the median from the any data set and the n plus 1 divided by 2 it is actually not uh, this formula is actually calculate or draw the position of the uh, median value not the median this I keep in mind if this formula by using this formula for the any data set well we, while we use it it will draw or it will calculate the position of the median median value of any data set but not the median value of the data okay let's go we will do it here is the data in the old form is the seven uh, data is given over here in the 17 uh, numbers are the 17 frequency or 17 numbers of the uh, the 17 is the old data so the data is here uh, is a score of the pillars of the 70 pillars uh, they have the score in the one hours uh, so in the one in the per hours so one uh, the one a pillar is 3 4 5 7 8 9 11 14 15 16 7 16 16 17 19 19 20 21 22 this this is the, the score of the 17 periods in the per hours uh, which is they have it was in the uh, not oh, it was in the raw data it was not the arranged data but here i arranged the data i arranged or ordered the data from the lowest score towards the uh, towards the highest score of the 17 periods per hour score they have done the, they have the scored in the per hour. Now, this is the 17, uh, 17 numbers of the data. Now, we will go to use the formula which is for the calculation of the median position. Now, the total data is 17 plus 1 and we will go to divide by 2 uh, according to the uh, formula. Now, 17 plus 1, it, it becomes 18 and 18, uh, 18 divided by 2, it's come up to the 9. Is 9 is not the median, 9 is the position, 9 is the position of data set. 
of the given data set of the uh, of the given given data set ninth ninth is the positions of the median value in the given data set now we will it is arranged data it is in the order form now we will go to find out where is the ninth positions of the median value 1 2 3 4 5 6 7 8 9 9 this is the ninth positions ninth position of the data set okay now the 15 15 the value the 15 uh, the value of uh, in the given data set of the 17 period the 15 run the 15 is the middle value or is the is the uh, the median values of the, this data set is the 15 which is lying which is placed on the ninth positions as according to the formula we calculate that the the, uh, the ninth position of will be of the median value so the 15 is lying on the ninth position so the 15 is the median 15 is the median median it is the answer so keep in mind by using this formula the, the formula is calculate the formula of the median is calculate the position of the value in the data set for the median it is not calculate it is not calculate the keep in mind this formula is not calculate the median value it is calculate the positions of the it will say or it will calculate it will come up with the result to find out the positions of the median value of the given data set so on the ninth position is the 15 and the 15 is the median for that particular data which is odd in number now the another uh, data set which is in uh, even number now this data set this this uh, the first one was the 17 which is one in the old and this one this data set is the 16 in numbers and it is a in even number the in the in the even number while we using this formula it little bit uh, comes up with the different uh, it it also calculate the uh, median is the positions of the median value now we will go to use the formula of the median n plus 1 for this given data set for the 16 one for the even data n plus 1 divided by 2 now the total number of the data is 16 plus 1 and divided by 2 the total sum up of the denominator is become a 17 and 17 divided by 2 then you will come up like 8.5 now 8.5 is the positions of the position of the median data median data median data now we will go to measure it uh, 1 2 3 4 5 6 7 8 now 1 2 3 4 5 6 7 8 8 on the right side 8 on the left side now the the position was the position will uh, the position of the median value we calculated through the formula it comes up with the 8.3 so 8.3 is fall between 14 and 15 14 and 15 so it means the median for this even data set is fall between 14 and 15 so we will calculate the between data of the 14 and 15 so what we will do for that in the even 14 plus 15 we will add up these two middle value because the position of the median value for the even data of the 16 number of the 16 uh, data set it's come up, up with the 8.5 8.5 the position is fall between 14 and 15 data set so
so we we will sum up uh, we will sum up and we will add up the both the data 14 and 50 and divided by 2 it come up with the uh, 14 and 15 is 49 49 divided by 2 1 4 14.5 is the median median of this even data set of the given even data set okay right the 14.5 now you see in the uh, in the uh, you can look that the even data which is the 16 in numbers in the given data set is a 14.5 is not is here because the median value as we said uh, learned in the I told you in the in the in the starting of the lecture the median is always the middle value of the data set of the any given data set. So the 14.5 is the median value between the uh, 14 and 15. So for the even data set, it is 14.5 is the median of this data set. Now the second property, as I told you earlier, it is used for the uh, the second property of the median. It is used for the discrete and for the continuous, for the interval, for the ratio, and for the ordinal data. Now this data are uh, the score of the 17 and 16 periods in the or uh, in the two data set. It is in the discrete value. So now we come up on the uh, fourth uh, uh, on the fourth properties of the median. In the fourth properties of the median, I told you that the the extreme value and uh, the lowest extreme value, the highest extreme value of any data set. If it, it will not affect on the it would not affect on the median. Now see over here in the both data set. If I write at the at the place of three, I will write the one. Definitely it will not be affect on the data set because the one is the extreme lowest value. So the median will be again will be the same, the 15. If I change uh, this to 222 by the 220, then again the highest value, which is which was the in the the in the, in the first data set, was 22, and I replace it by the uh, 220 220 uh, numbers in the data set, so it will not be affect on the a median position of the data set it will be the remain the same okay now same in this data set in this data set if I change this extreme value from the 20 to 150 then again the median will be remain the same so we learn that the by the, uh, the in the median by by uh, by using uh, by putting the extreme lowest value and extreme highest value the median of the data set after the arranging after the arranging or after the ordered form it will not be affect on the median values of the any data set now we will go to come up the we will go to learn about the third methods of to measure the central tendency of the data we learned yesterday we learned that in the, uh, yesterday i told you and even i told you today that the the central tendency is the central part of the normally distributed data for the normally distributed data to measure the central tendency we use the three methods to measure the central uh, tendency of any data set the mean median and the third one is the mode 
We learned the two method. Now we will learn to third method mode. Mode is the highest frequency in any data set. If any data set, any value which is highest in number present in any data set, it is called the mode. And it will be it will be unimodal one mode in any data set. It may be bi or di mode. It may be tri three mode. It may be three mode. It may be tetra or quadra mode. It may be penta mode. Maybe five times. Many any five value which is come up in the highest value, but in the same frequency. It may be hexa. It may be septa. Septa is seven times. It may be seven frequency. Uh, say uh, seven more uh, mode, uh, seven number in the mode, and maybe it is a uh, octa, is maybe nano, is maybe deca. Now I will go to learn over here. Suppose one is a uh, the age of age of infants. Three years, three years, four years, four years, four years. Five years, six six years, seven years, eight years, again nine years and ten years and ten years. Now see, in this uh, now before to that we learn three, four, five, six, seven, eight, again nine and ten. Age of the child. Okay. In the first one, the uh, one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight. These are the eight data of the children's uh, which is I have given, which is I have written over here. The data set of the age of the child, which is are the eight in numbers in the total frequency. But the age of each one child is three years, four years, five years, six years, seven years, eight years, nine years, and ten years. Now the the every data is uh, the frequency of every data is the first in the first data set is the one in a number. So it means no any frequency, no any mode is there, no any mode is present in the first data. Now in the second data of the age of the children. It is a 3, 3, 4, 4, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9, 10, 10. Even though, now see, 3 is the 2 times and 4 is 3 times, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9, they are the in the 1 time and 10 and 10. These, uh, the 10 is the 2 times. Now, see in this data, the 4, the age of the 4, years of the children they are the three in times so it is the highest in frequency as compared of the three years and the ten years so it is the four years is the mode four is the mode is the mode in this in this given data set and it is called the unimodal uni model yeah unimode Unimodal or unimode. Now we will go at the third data. In the third data again, 4, 5, 3, 3, 6, 9, 7, again 7, and 8, 10, and 2 years, and 1 year. Now see in this data set, uh, in the third example, if you see the three and the seven, the three and seven they are come up uh, with the highest frequency two two times in this third example of the data set. So the three and seven, three and seven are the model. These are called the bi model. Y model or you can say die model in the letter 
bimodal or dimodal means two mode is present because the three and seven uh, come up in this data set two times. Now in the fourth data set we will see four, five, three, 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 six, 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 nine and seven, 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 eight and ten. Now see in this given data set, the three come up three times, six is come up uh, three times, and seven is also come up with the comes three times. So in this given data set, or the as example of the the fourth example of the data set, the three three year child, six year child, and seven year child, they are in the highest frequency present in the data set three three times. So the three, six, and seven. These are the tri models. Tri models, and so on. As I told you in the other data set, oh, five, 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 and three, three, six, 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 and six, and nine, seven. Seven, seven, again eight, 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 and eight, eight, and again nine. In this, in the, in the fifth example, you see the five years of the children, the those children who have, who have the five years of the five years of their age, and the six years of the six years, and the seven years, and the eight years. The five, the five years, six years, and seven years, and eight years, they are the, the highest frequency. They, they have come up the four times in the data set. So the one, five, six, seven, eight, they are the four. Five, six, seven, and eight. These are the tetra models. You can call the tetra or you can call the quadra. Quadra model. Quadra model. Same one. If the any data, now the same one, if the any data in the any data which is present uh, five times in the highest frequency, so it is called the penta. If the any data set which is uh, six times in the data, the six data are which is are present in the highest frequency uh, with the same numbers with the same number it is called the hexa if the any data in the any data set the seven numbers which is present in the highest frequency with the equal highest frequency that's called the septa in the any data set in which the eight numbers are eight data which is in the highest frequency with the same equal highest frequency it is called the octa and in the same in any data set, if the any data which is present in the equal highest frequency nine times, that we call the nano data, nano models, nano models of the air at that particular data set. And in the if the any uh, in any data set, if the ten uh, highest frequency with the equal numbers, that's called the deca uh, model. So if keep in this mind. If if keep in this mind, in the C over here, the five in this uh, example number four uh, data set, the five come up with the four number of the frequency, and six is comes come up in this data set with the four times, and the seven is also come up with the four times, and also eight is comes come up with the four times, and nine is come up with the two times, and three is also is come up with the and here is a three two times but the you see over here the five six seven eight eight these are the tetra and quadrama but the frequency is highest but the frequency is all all of these four data five six seven and eight here in the equal highest frequency means four four times if suppose in this data set if the five is come up with five times if data is come up in this data, I change it. The in the this data set, 
the five is come up five times with the five times five frequency, highest frequency, and the six on the four, uh, on the fourth, uh, fourth uh, with the four numbers, and the seven with, again is with the four highest frequency with the, uh, five, uh, with the four number of the frequency, and the eight is the, with the four number of the frequency, but the five is the five times, so the five has become a highest frequency among this data. Because the 6, 7 or 8 is the 4 times and the 5 is come up the 5 times. So the 5 is the mode in this data set. Because it is the highest in number in the frequency. As I told you in the definition of the mode in the any data set that particular data which is the highest number of the frequency it is called the mode of the data. So in the today session, uh, in the today session and, and the yesterday session, we learned about the central tendency. What is the central tendency actually is? The central tendency is measure the central uh, central part of the normal distributed data. This normal distributed data is always come up with the uh, bell shape, and the uh, the bell shape uh, of the data set is shows the data is a normally dist normally distributed. In the normally distributed data, the, the mean mode median is fall in the center of the data. The total probability of the data is 1. The, at, the, at, at the x axis, at the base of the bell, the probability, total probability is 1 or the 100 percent. The bell uh, shape of the uh, normal distributed data, if you, if, you, if, you, if you will go to divide it in the, uh, from the central part, the left side is the 50 percent or left side is the 50 percent and left side on the right side on the 50 percent. The left side of the uh, bell shape of the normal distributed data is give the mirror image of the right side. So and where the center tendency actually is the data which is normal distributed it is pull the data towards the center. Is it is tends to pull the data towards the center and make the cluster of the data in the central part of the normally distributed data. So, for to measure the, this central tendency of the data, we have the three method. By the three method, we uh, measure the central tendency by the mean, mode, and median. Yesterday we learned about the mean. Today we learned about the median and the mode. I hope from the two-day lecture session, the concept of the central tendency about the mean and central tendency, what are the three methods for the, to measure the central tendency of the normal distributed data, mean, mode, median. Uh, yeah, it is clear your concept more in detail, more in, in depth. Uh, I hope uh, from the two-day two day session, uh, the two-day session you uh, learned so much and it is clear your concept about the central tendency, about the mean, mode, and median. Uh, tomorrow we will go to learn about the variability of the data and how what are the methods to measure the variability or the variance in the of the data set. Uh, and the look and the last I once again I once again humbly request to you all the, to please uh, watch my video lecture of the biostats. It will clear your concept um, uh, very clearly about the uh, statics and it is uh, give you more knowledge and more grip about the uh, maths and the statics uh, subjects and I also humbly request to you all uh, uh, please uh, prescribe my uh, YouTube channel uh, and also say your uh, colleague, classmate, friend of circle and you are the teacher in any uh, medical college or if you are teacher in the allied health sciences, if you are teaching the nursing program student to please say your uh, students to watch my video of the biostats and subscribe my youtube subscribe my youtube channel hph hazara public health and uh, i also request you in the last to press the bell button if i by pressing the bell button you will get my uh, new lecture which is i will upload as soon as possible on my youtube channel thank you so much